Creating a sex gym interface for your tool or equipment is simple with Transsex. We'll guide you through the basic steps of creating the gym IDs, and the few messages you're likely to need to provide a complete sex gym interface for your tool. The sample gym tool project demonstrates all the typical requirements of a sex gym interface for a tool or equipment. Fundamental to sex gym are the three ID types, CEIDs, ALIDs, and VIDs. CEIDs are collection event IDs. A collection event is something that happens in the equipment that might be of interest to the host. You get to decide what events your tool should produce, different tools require different events. Don't worry, Transsex manages all the host interaction, enable and disable, adding reports and values, you just indicate that the event has occurred. ALIDs are alarm IDs. These indicate an error at the equipment and are communicated to the host. VIDs are value IDs. These are the values that you will exchange with the host. We'll use the gym tool example that is provided with Transsex. Select Open Project and choose the gym tool. The project tree provides nodes for your tool configuration. The root node provides the default configuration for your tool interface. The tool name describes your tool. You can configure the default device ID and port. You can change these at runtime. The host developer will need this information. The default baud rate applies to SEX1 or serial tools. You can set the default timeouts. You can select the deployment type from the drop-down list. OPC is used for integrating with factory automation solutions. Ergotex MI Studio provides a drag-and-drop, no-code development IDE for SEX gym tools and hosts. You can deploy for Amazon's AWS, Microsoft's Azure or other cloud providers. Programmatic support for Java, JavaScript, including Node.js, c -sharp, .NET, other .NET languages, C++ and other native languages, Python and more. Only used for testing hosts from Transsex. You need to add the ALIDs. CE IDs and VIDs that are part of your tool. Adding these is easy. Transex will guide you. We'll start by adding ALIDs. Select the ALIDs node and right click. Choose Add ALID. Give your alarm a name. Give your alarm an ID. A note about GEM IDs. The GEM standard requires that each variable, alarm, event and value, must have a unique numeric ID. The ID is how the host application references your variables and you must provide a list of these with your tool interface manual. The ALCD describes the severity of your alarm. The ALCD values are defined in the sex gym standard. Add the ALTX, this will be sent to the host when the alarm is generated and so should describe the alarm. Optionally add a set and clear CEID for the alarm. The set and clear events CEIDs are triggered automatically by Transex, you don't have to do that. Adding these events is optional, but recommended. Continue to add additional alarms as needed for your tool. Remove the sample alarms or any extra alarms by right-clicking and choosing Remove ALID. Adding event, CEID, is similar to an alarm, a LID. Right-click the CEID's node and choose Add CEID. Provide a name and ID for your event. Continue to add events as needed for your tool. 
you can delete the sample events. Click on the VID node. Choose Add VID. Add a name and an ID. Choose a type for your variable value. Transex supports all the standard sex types. Choose the type of variable you are creating. SVIDs are set by the equipment and can only be read by the host. ECIDs are set by either the host or the equipment. DVIDs are values that are only valid on particular events. The remaining values are optional. Units, are descriptive and can be requested by the host. Initial value, provides a default value. Limit min and max are for integer or real data types. If you provide a deadband, changes in the variable within this range will be ignored. Change or limit CEID is the event that will be fired when the variable is used for limits monitoring. Commands from the host, remote commands, are usually sent with S2F41 messages. Transex provides a number of sample remote command messages. You can modify these, add additional, and delete the unneeded messages. A sample recipe select, PP select, message. These are common on tools and allow the host to choose the process recipe from those already available on the tool. If you need more parameters to run the recipe you can require that the host provides additional parameters. This commonly includes the load port, or some other identification of which lot is to use this recipe. Here we include the lot ID. If you've marked your S2F41 message as a remote command and configured send error message, Transex will automatically validate the message. Validation ensures that the command is correct, e.g. pp select, and that the parameters are present. The order of the parameters is unimportant, but the CP names must exist and there must not be unknown CP name parameters. Transex will notify the host of any errors. When you are notified of the received message it will be valid. You will still need to check the parameters, for example that the PPID is a valid recipe on your tool. The response messages allow you to respond with good or bad replies. Another typical remote command, the start command to begin processing. This example includes the PPID. Usually you'd either include the PPID here or have a separate PP select message not both. You might want to add the lot ID here also. Even if you don't need it, it's a convenience for the host developer. Transex provides file-based recipe management. It will automatically handle the stream 7 messages, S7 F3, F5, F17 and F19. You can enable this by setting the parameter transex.recipemanager equals 1 in the ErgoTech configuration.properties file. If this file-based recipes management is not suitable for your application, you can create the stream 7 messages and handle the requests. The next section show an example of creating an S7F5 message and a response message. Right-click the root node and select, Add Message. You can easily create messages with any stream, function and valid structure within Transex. This sample creates an S7F5 message and the S7F6 response. Enter a name and stream and function for the message. You can choose a direction for your message. The S7F5 can be received from the host or sent by your tool so it's a bidirectional message.
Right click the message and choose Add Item to create the message structure. Transex adds an element of type list. The S7F5 has only one element. PPID. That element is of type string. Change the element name to be PPID. Drop down the type selection and choose string. That's all we need to do for this message. The S7F5 message has a response, the S7F6. Right click and add a new message to create this response. Set the name and the stream and function. Right click to add the message structure. The structure of this message is defined by the E5 or SEX2 standard. That's all for this video. We've seen how to add the IDs that our tool needs, and messages to control the tool and recipes. With these, the tool sex gem interface is complete. Other videos talk about deployment. Linking the IDs and messages to tags in a PLC, OPC server or client or other control systems, including linking to Java, .NET, C++ and other programming languages. Check out these videos to see how to easily make these connections and have a full sex gem interface for your tool.